Speaking about network security, firewalls are at the heart of it. I can go as far as saying that, let's say if you're a network engineer and you have some good networking experience, learning about firewalls and working on firewalls basically means that 60% of your job is done if you're then looking to transition into cybersecurity, primarily network security. In this video, what we'll do is let's look at what firewalls are, how they function, how they operate, and then we'll also look at the different courses or skills that you need to do if you want to be a good network security engineer. Now, if you're interested in knowing mainly about the skills that you need to know when working on firewalls or even the courses or certifications that you need to do, do check the description of this video or the timestamps and you can just go to that section. And uh, if you want to just know about what firewalls are first, please stick around. Firewalls are traditionally network perimeter devices, which means that they sit at the edge of our network infrastructure. And uh, the reason of that is so that it can have a good holistic view of all the traffic that's either entering or exiting your network. Now, your LAN could probably consist of switches, routers, servers, access points, um, a wireless LAN controller. You could have load balancers if you're running any web services or any other servers. And then you can have a firewall, which pretty much polices any traffic that is traversing your network to any of these different network devices. With the advent of good security standards, what I've consistently seen is that the number of firewalls also has increased in networks. What this means is, is that you can have firewalls that let's say one that sits at the edge of your network, which polices traffic exiting and entering, let's say going out to the internet, coming back into your network from the internet. And then you can have different firewalls for different purposes, let's say, one specifically for any servers you're running, one for the different LANs, let's say you're running VLANs and you're running different subnets, you can have a separate firewall which deals with policing traffic related to those networks. So the use cases for having firewalls in a network has increased many fold. And look, I don't in any way blame engineers or architects that are deploying more firewalls. Reason being, a lot of network security attacks are on the rise and firewalls are there to protect you against these attacks. Now, the way a firewall functions is you have something called as security policies. These security policies are mainly governed by a source and destination address. And any traffic that is flowing between this source and destination is policed by the firewall. And you can either allow that type of traffic or you can deny that type of traffic. Earlier firewalls functioned mainly on source and destination IP addresses, port numbers, etc. But as hackers got smarter, they started using more advanced techniques to try and infiltrate your network. As a result of which, firewalls also started performing something called as deep packet inspection. And when firewalls now have all of these advanced features such as QoS, policy-based forwarding, deep packet inspection, etc., they were then called to be known as next generation firewalls. The way a firewall functions is pretty simple. Again, as said earlier, you need security policies and based on security policies, traffic is either allowed or denied. But then you've also got different zones that you can create on a firewall. And there are different interfaces that can be assigned to different zones. Now, depending on what your use case is for your organization, you can have either L2, that's layer two interfaces or layer three interfaces. And then these interfaces, as mentioned, can be tied to these different zones and any traffic entering or exiting the zones can then be policed based on a wide range of options. Again, traditionally speaking, the way these zones function is, let's say, for example, you have one zone, which is called as an inside zone, which caters mainly to your internal users. The next zone is an outside zone, which caters mainly to your internet facing traffic. And finally, you have a third type of zone, which is called as DMZ, demilitarized zone which is mainly used for any servers that you're running, let's say, for example, that users from the internet need to come in and access those services. And the way policing works around these different zones is that you need to have maximum level of security on your internal zone so that you don't have any random users from the internet being able to access any resources on your inside zone. But at the same time, on your DMZ zone, you can sort of keep your controls a little bit lighter because they are meant to be internet facing servers so that users from the internet can then access any resources that are on those servers. As I spoke about deep packet inspection, what a firewall does is that when it's inspecting any traffic, 
it goes right up to layer 7 so that if there are any hidden attacks or hacks that are trying to be sent into your network even at an application layer the firewall can easily catch that and most of the vendors today like checkpoint fortinet palo alto they all do deep packet inspection so that your network can remain secure from any attacks or hacks firewalls today also have advanced analytics which means that it gives you a good picture of your whole network's performance from a holistic view and it also tells you what your risk factors are how you can improve security within your network at a network level and that is so valuable when you're a network security engineer personally speaking i've also worked on palo alto firewalls and i do have a guide that i usually use so if you want to get that free guide just comment guide in the comment section and i will send that to you it's a good little handbook with all about interfaces zones how you can configure them security policies etc now if you're interested in um, learning about firewalls there are a lot of free resources on youtube on the internet that you can use um, there's no specific one that i would recommend however if you're looking to learn about palo alto firewalls then most certainly there is a really good youtube video that's going to be in the description of this video do check it out it's by knowledge power it's like an eight hour long video and it'll give you a very good rundown on the use of Palo Alto firewalls. Other than that, again, from a Palo Alto perspective, uh, some certifications include the PCNSA and the PCNSE, something that I've spoken about a lot on this channel. So you can study for those certifications. These resources are also free and they're offered by Palo Alto on their website. Again, link is going to be in the description. Click on it, you can download that free guide and yeah, get studying. And also do practice a lot of hands-on labs because that helps a lot when it comes to understanding and learning about firewalls. The specific skills that you need to know as a network security engineer or working with firewalls are all about zones, interfaces, policy-based forwarding. You need to know how to create security policies to allow or deny traffic. You need to know about layer seven inspections. Um, you need to know about NAT rules on firewalls. And you also need to know on about how to configure routing when it comes to these firewalls because that's very important. You need to have routing within your network or nothing's gonna work. Other than this, filtering of traffic, reading of logs that are generated by firewalls so you can troubleshoot where your traffic's blocked or um, anything that you wanna see in the network, you need to know how to check firewall logs, how to apply different filters. Again, around these filters as well, different vendors have different types of filters. Um, so especially if you're working with Palo Alto firewalls, you can just go online and try and search for some free filters that are available, which will help you gain insight or narrow down from thousands of logs that are generated to specifically a specific source or destination or application type that you are trying to look at. So there you go, guys. This was all about firewalls, which is, again, so important when it comes to network security. Um, obviously, I couldn't go completely in depth because the length of this video doesn't permit that. But if you're looking to get into network security, then this is something you definitely need to know. If you like this video, do hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.